Now, before we get to the video, if you're new to the channel, I wanted to let you know that we try to stay up to date on all things 3D printing, from filament and printer reviews to in-depth slicer analysis, as well as a plethora of how-to videos. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be notified every time we post a new video. Hey, welcome back. I am Technivorous. Today we are going to be installing our ring vent on our Ender 3 here. Um, this is made out of Polymax, or excuse me, Polymaker Polymax PETG. Uh, it's a pretty nice model. I've had several prints of this, and I did have one on here once before, but it hung down a little too low and seemed to catch on the model. So this is actually a better quality print. I've improved the model just a little bit with a couple of tweaks, and I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab my smallest Allen key, and basically we are going to unscrew the part cooling fan here. Now this is a pretty straightforward swap unlike some of the other fans and that's the reason I chose this one. With the Pets Fang and Bullseye you're going to be pulling the fans off and rearranging some stuff. With this guy here it's just these two little screws and it pops right into place. Now the important thing to remember here is that you don't want to over tighten these because over tightening them is how I actually broke the stock fan shroud that went on here the uh, spot here is not as strong as it seems as you can see this is a pretty narrow range of filament all around the hole there so we are going to go ahead and pop this out and there you go that's the old one came off pretty easy next we need to insert the new one and obviously we don't want to jam on anything we're just gonna go real slow and gentle and it pops right in so now we're gonna replace our machine screws here it's actually staying in place it's a that's how you know you got a very good fit it's not so tight that it was hard to put on but it's not loose enough to fall off on its own I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up just a little bit now I try not to move the axis too much when the machine is off because it will cause power to course through the machine and you can cause damage to the board that way um, I have done it about a million times already though and have yet to damage it myself but I do try to be as cautious as possible now it is very easy to thread this screw in here and not have the vent lined up across the bottom and not actually be in the screw hole and think you are and I'm thinking that that is one of the reasons that my last one hung down too low uh, but it also this bottom surface here has been reduced in height on this one so I shouldn't have any bumping or scraping now the key is whoop, well the key is to get it in the hole I guess I'll do this one I can see over here first should help me line up the other one but as I was saying the key is to make sure, and I'll show you in a second when we're all screwed in here, that no part of the vent goes below the tip of your nozzle, and in fact, you want a little bit of a gap there. So if the vent is going below your nozzle, it's obviously not going to let the nozzle hit the bed, for one, which means that you won't get any bed adhesion. And for two, it means that your vent is going to be in the way, and if somehow you do get a good print to start, the vent itself will knock it over every time. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure things are good to go. Now, this is getting pretty snug in here. Like I said, I don't want to over tighten it. Now that I've got that in there, I should have this back screw pretty well lined up to where I can just turn it in. And we'll see how that works out. There it goes. It's going. As I said, be cautious not to over tighten these. If you start to feel any resistance, go ahead and stop. It doesn't need to be screwed on there super tight. Uh, now I can tell this one here is actually a little too tight. So if I slide over, you can see that it is kind of causing uh, not to miss misshape yet. But I think if I had to tighten that just a little bit more, you would start to see some warping in that plastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, back it off just a little bit, which also helped me straighten out. 
and we will once again improperly raise our x-axis and as you can see I have a fairly good gap between the tip of my nozzle and the depth of this guy so um, that should be pretty good I mean I can fit a whole allen key in there probably the next size up so that should give me the clearance I need to do a proper print without knocking it over now real quickly before we get to our test print with the new vent I want to show you why it is necessary to replace these every so often especially if you're printing with something such as PLA like this one is the replacement I printed is PETG so it should stand up to the heat a little better than this but the bottom of this was flat when I printed it and it would sit up straight and that well, that's the first time I got it to stand up straight. If you look, though, you can see the bottom has become bowed. Um, and not just downward, but the back has also started to bulge out. Now, this is slow warping over a long period of time. And what's actually happening is the pieces of this model that are closest to the nozzle are starting to become annealed. And it's mostly around the outside edges because generally there's good airflow through the middle which keeps it cool so you can see that those flat edges are still pretty straight but everywhere on the outside of this fan cover is begun to warp and started to go out of true so i think it's probably that's probably the best angle you can see it at there where it starts high here and then goes down and waves back up so as always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. As always, thank you. I'll put a video up right here that you can check out for more of our stuff. And if you're still here and you haven't already, why don't you click right here and subscribe to the channel.